Shemitah year, the Shemitah, the Shemitah year, the Shemitah year is a type of jubilees. And we're touching on Deuteronomy, just briefly, kind of an overview, but we need to get more into this, you know, to get into knowledge, to study this. Why? Because during this blood moon times, we are in a Shemitah or Shemitah, a year of release, right? It began Rosh Hashanah, right? Uh, September 25th, 2014. And this is right in the same blood moon times, right? So if you're not familiar with the blood moon times, at least from the elect Rastafari mind, then, you know, check out some of the previous vids that have been posted. But this blood moon time, right, where the Shemitah began with Rosh Hashanah. Now, what is the Shemitah, right? And just need to kind of, as the world is progressing toward judgment, Right? The world is progressing towards judgment. So we have the Shemitah and the blood moons, the convergence of the Shemitah and the blood moons. There is a great shaking. Right? There's a great shaking coming to America. There's a great shaking coming to Babylon. Now, I'm not saying this is the great earthquake that Revelation speaks about, but I'm not saying it's not. Abba, Father, knows best, right? So we bless his name, you know, Baruch HaShem. Now, what is the Shemitah? The Shemitah is a release. It means release. It means call. It can also mean collapse and a shaking. And it occurs every seven years. When we get to Deuteronomy chapter 15, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 15. Let me just update my notes right here uh deuteronomy chapter the whole chapter chapter 15 which was the reading which is a portion comprised the portion of the reading for the shemeni atzeret right or what is known as the eighth day assembly right that eighth day assembly that solemn assembly right on the eighth day after the Hoshana Rabbah or the day of the great salvation, which concludes the tabernacle or the in gathering. You know, when I and I speak about gather I and I selves together, we're in the spirit of it. I and I, Rastafari, have received the irate, but now we have to make our wills obedient to his majesty's good influence to the good news of the king of kings and study the word so we may bring glory right we may bring glory to i and i abba i and i father i and i power the abba and father of i and i black lord and savior yeshua hamoshia amen now a couple of brief words on this because my eye glanced over this during the the break between recordings Right, and um, the Shemitah is release, call, a collapse, or a shaking every seven years. And here's the good news, right? In Yah's way, not Babylon way. Babylon way has gone so far astray from Yah's way, purposefully, right? But in Yah's way, the Shemitah, the time that we are in right now, from September 25th, 2014 to September 13th. 2015. So this whole year, right, beginning from the Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of the what? The first trumpet, right, from the, from that blowing of the Rosh Hashanah trumpet to the blowing of the upcoming Rosh Hashanah trumpet, September 13th, 2015, and the Shemitah, the year of release, which is also known as the Sabbatic or the Sabbatical, right, huh? The sabbatical year. So we're in the time of the sabbatical year. Right? Or you could twang it if you want. The Shabbatical year. But this is Rastafari sabbatical. So we're going to keep it thick. Rastafari sabbatical. This is the sabbatical year. But in the Schofield Study Bible right here, there's a subscription of the sabbatic year. Right? So what is the sabbatic year? What is this sabbatical year? What is this Shemitah 
time and season and what other instructions that we as Hebrews and the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel, the Beta Yehuda, right, are called to. Here's what it says. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a what? Thou shalt make a release, right? Thou shalt make a release. See, this is Shemitah, the release, that year of release. So when you look at it, we have the seventh day Shabbat, and then we also have the seventh year Shabbat. And then on top of that, this present time is a Jubilee, a Eobeliu, right? Eobeliu, like the book of Jubilees, very important reading and connection. So we're in that consistent time. We're in the God time, so to speak. We're in Elohim, Eloheinu, Yahweh, he who be, who he be, his divine majesty's time. So this is speaking of the end of every seven years and the year of release. I wanted to read this right here. It's the words of the King of Kings. It's better to die free. That's only we can be born again, right? It's better to die free, right? Than to live in slavery. Bebarnet, kamenor, benetsanet, memot, yishalal. It is better to die free, right? Than to live in in slavery. Let's overstand that iritically, spiritually, all right? Because though ones and ones may not overtly see the chains, because they remove the chains right off our hands and our feet, and they put them on what our hearts and our minds, right? Through the counterfeit Christianity, you know, and the insanity of Babylon. But this is the time of the release, if you are willing, if you can receive it. As Yeshua HaMushi said, yes, this is so, if you can receive it, right? Can you receive it? Verse 2 says, and this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth ought to his neighbor shall release it. Mm -hmm. So every creditor who has lended anything, ought, ought, not, nothing, ought, anything, right? Ought to his neighbor shall release it. Don't say, well, if you please, if, you know, if they smile at you. No, you shall release it if you are in the Kalakidan, the Berit Chadash, if you are in the covenant, the benign Berit, right? He shall not exact it of his neighbor. To say extort it, in other words, right? Or threaten or, you know, you know, the way that. Or of his brother, because it is Yahweh's release. It is whose release? It is Yahweh's release. Is it man and people's release? It is Yahweh's re release. It is Jah, Rastafari's release. Verse 3 says, Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again. So of a fringe thou mayest exact it again. Now, now behind this teaching, we want to touch on the usury system. So we're just putting this out there. Don't have time to really get into the real... Um, you know, the real deepness on it right here, or the HD, the high definition, but the usury system, right? Go check out some of what's out there about the usury system so one can understand the usury system as well as the Jews who say they are Jews, those who have, have run bad credit, right, in I and I name. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to understand that Revelation 2 and 9 will lead to Revelation 3 and 9. Amen? So it says, of a far enough for range, thou mayest exact it again. This is why when the so-called Jews who call themselves Jews, the Ashkenazi, not the Hebrew ones, the you know, they're not the Hebrew Yehuda, right? They're not of the tribe of Judah. We know that he who be who he be, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. So you see the you see the difference? So give tribute, right? So of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again, but that which is but that which is thine with thy brother, thine hand shall release. But what is yours with your brother? So there's a difference between our wendem, our wendemoch, right, and others. So to say that, well, every black man is our brother. Well, they said that because that's what they knew. We know better, so we must do better, right? Amen?
Verse 4, save, except is the word save in this context, when there shall be no poor among you. For Yahweh shall greatly bless thee in the land which Yahweh Eloheka giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. So he has given us a land for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about the beachfront property that everybody is fighting over because of false prophecy, the so-called Middle East or Jezreel, which they call the state of Israel. Who made that statement? Right? The state of Israel. We're talking about the kingdom of the king of kings in Christ. So it says right here that he will greatly bless our land. Only, 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 verse 5, only, only, only if. Right? So, so here's what you have to decide. Right? Here's where a decision mm -hmm, must be made. Right? Here's where a decision must be made. Let's go forward. It says right here, it says, Only if thou carefully hearken. That means carefully listen. Right? Carefully listen. Now this also connects with the Berit Hadash, the New Testament reading for the Shemeni Atzeret, right? Which we find in, um, which we find in, let's bring this up right here. It's in, uh, what is it? Matthew, right? Matthew chapter, chapter, uh, Mindano, chapter, let's get this right here. Matthew, bring this up again and show you this right here so you can see this right here. Here's what we're referring to. So you'll see this on Rastafari Groundation and also the Hebrew for Christians. You see Shemeni Atzeret, right? So we'll move it over. The New Testament reading is Matthew 17, 1 to 9, right? 17, 1 to 9. It's that word hearken, right? It's that word hearken that is so significant, right? And so let's go to 17 to 9 and just tie this in, though we wanted to do it separately for, um, for the Mount of Tr Transfiguration, right? But the Holy Spirit says to put this in right here. And so we're going to listen and put this in right here. 17, right? 1 to, uh, 1, uh, to 9. Verse 1 to 9. Right? And after six days, Matthew chapter 17, 1 to 9. And after six days, Yeshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain. Right? So he taketh his he taketh them and he brings them into a what kind of a mountain? A high kind of a mountain. Let's bring this forward right here. Right? For the transfiguration, the Mount of Transfiguration. This is another one that we had um did to show the Deborah ta uh, Tabor. Right, so we can see this right here, the Mount of Transfiguration. So this goes with this right here. So continuing to read, verse 2. And it was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses, Musa, and Eliyahu, or Elias, right, Elias. Right, talking with him. So this is from the old, um, the old Russian Orthodox. So you can see the true to the color, right? So we are use this one from the next one to show His Majesty in that in those garments there. Let's uh, see if we can. We have that right there, like that as well, right? So we'll hold that, right? So right there, let's read on, right? So they were so Moses and Elias was talking with who? Was talking with Yeshua HaMoshiach. Then answered Peter and said, Yeshua, said to Yeshua, said to him, Adoni, right? It is good for us, I and I, to be here. If thou wilt, let us make us, make I and I, make here three tabernacles. One for thee and one for Musa, Moses, Moshe, 
and one for Elias or Eliyahu. While he yet spake, while the words were still in his mouth, in Peter's mouth, right? Behold, a bright cloud, not a dark cloud, a bright cloud. Was it a regular rain cloud? No, it was a bright cloud overshadowed them. This is cloud technology, right? The original. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, here, what it says, here, Shema ye him. Right? Shema ye him. Now that's what I wanted to get to, that verse right there. Hear ye him. Verse 5. Right? And while Peter was given his suggestion, so a lot of times we might have suggestions about ministry, what we want to do. They might sound like good ideas. They might actually be good ideas. Right? But first we have to hear the son. Right? We have to hear the bane. Elohim Chayim, right? The son of the living God. This is this is what our father says through his cloud technology. Behold, a bright cloud overshadow them, and behold, look and see a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son. So you see how Satan, Lucifer's children, right, are trying to, you know, through their worldly wisdom. But this is I and I wisdom. Right? I and I, the wisdom from above, not the wisdom from below. See, see James. James speaks about the two kinds of wisdom. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He didn't say, this is my son in whom I'm pleased. He said, this is my beloved son. Love and be loved, the son, in whom I am well pleased. Not that I'm pleased. He's all right. No, I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. So let's return to this word right here in Deuteronomy. I right? just wanted to kind of like touch on this portion right here. So we are to hear the son. Right? We are to hear the, the son. And we go to the father. We recognize him in spirit and in truth in the person of Kedemah with Halaslasi. What does Halaslasi say? Hear ye him. Right? So there is, there is no uh, confusion, contradiction, or whatnot. It is one and the same. It is the procession, right? of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So here's what it says in the sabbatic year um, 15, Deuteronomy chapter 15. It says, only, he says, save when there shall be no poor among you. So he said that there would be a time, you could have done that, right? there would be a time when there is no right poor right amongst I and I, but he says, only, right, what is that? Only, right, let me read the whole verse. Save when there shall be no poor among you. For Yahweh, he who be who he be, shall greatly bless thee in the land. Where? Is he going to bless us in a land that's not our own? No, he says that he will greatly bless us, right, in the land. Let's bring this back to the gathering, right? This is the gathering, right? Because this is the word for the Shemenia Tzeret or the Sementenya, Sementenya Gubaye, right? The assembly, right? So this year is a Shemata year. There's much, there's so much more in this, but I want to lay a basic, a basic foundation, a basic foundation. He says, to bless in the land which Yahweh Eloheka giveth thee, exiav yam lake, the king of kings, I and I, father, giveth to I and I for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou, if I and I and we carefully hearken to the voice of Yahweh Eloheka, Xiavi to the king of kings, I and I, our father, to observe, to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. Now, this is what Moses said, but remember what the cloud, what the voice said. The voice said, This is my. Beloved son, hear ye him. So who are we to hear? Right? Who are we to hear? Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is, right? He is that prophet, right? Not Mahmud, right? Not Mahmud, not Mahmud. Nope, no it's not, right? But he says, uh, he says right here, ver furthermore, for Yahweh Eloheka blesseth thee, Right? As he promised thee, and thou shalt lend to many nations, 
but thou shalt not borrow. See, here's what we know when the curses, right? Another sign when the curses have been fully reversed, when we have freed our mind, when we have turned that paradigm upside down in his grace and in his truth, right? This, this might well be the time if we are willing to make our wills obedient to his good news, to the, to the gospel of the King of Kings in Christ. It says that, For Yahweh Eloheka blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend to many nations. So what is the blessing? The blessing we will lend to many nations. Black, white, Asian, many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign, reign, that's like rule, right? As kings, right? Over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee, right? Shall not reign over thee. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land, which Yahweh Eloheka, Xavier Amlake, the king of kings, I and I, father, giveth to thee, giveth to I and I, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Now, this is the key right here. Some ask whether the Bible, is the Bible the best solution or the best book or does it have the best solution for our people? It depends on how you qualify who is our people. Mm-hmm. Because that question has a faulty premise. Who is our people, right? We don't believe as the deceived or those who might not have known better but sincerely were seeking better that because you you black, you therefore are my brother. Well, who is your father? Right? Who is your mother? If you can't tell. Right? But thou shalt open thine hand so we are not to harden our heart, nor shut our hand from I and I poor brother. Are we doing that today as Rastafari? Right? It seems like though we took a little wrong turn, right? You know, in Babylon, in the wilderness. But thou shalt open thine hand wide. Open your hand, what, a little bit? Open your hand wide. Um, just, just give him a one, two. No, open your hand wide to him and shall surely lend. That's the operative word. Lend him sufficient, sufficient for his need. Not insufficient due to your greed, but sufficient for thy wendom, thy brother's, thy ox need. Right? Huh? Huh? In that which he wanteth. Oh, he can want. Oh, this brother, he being too greedy. So on and so on. He got to eat. He got to live. He's your brother. Are you still in covenant? Verse 9 says, beware. Beware. All right, this is the warning. Beware. Right? Be aware. Beware that there be not a thought. A what? A action? No. A thought. What? Something you did? A thought. A thinking. Right? In thy wicked heart. Well, you see, you see, when we talk about who we be, he's speaking to the Israelites. He's speaking to niggas. He's speaking to black people. The, the niggas, right? The niggas is speaking to niggas. You over? The niggas is speaking to niggas. Speaking to black folks. Speaks to I and I. Some fools say, I don't know what a negro is. I don't know what a negro is. That's because you're a nigger. I mean, you're deep in that niggas stuff. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart saying the seventh year, which this is, the Shemitah year, the seventh year, which is the sabbatic year, the seventh year, which is the sabbatical year, the year of release, let it go, is at hand, and thine eye be evil. Your what? Your eye be evil. You notice this? When you free your mind, that evil eye is no longer, that Buddha eye is not there. You see that? Free Your Mind. Go check out the Free Your Mind series um, that was posted about a couple of weeks forward, a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, you need to call, call in the call laborers. You need to get these on DVDs and videos to get this out there. Brothers and sisters are not like the item, are like the elect who can see these videos and, you know, receive it. But, but it's also to lend, to give to our brothers and sisters, those who are willing to hear the knowledge, Right? Because my people perish because of what? A lack of knowledge. Not because they don't have a 
bank account, credit cards, or whatever, because of lack of knowledge, right? But here is speaking to us, saying, Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and then I be evil against thy poor brother, thy brother who is poor, right? And thou givest him naught. You don't give him nothing. Right? Oh, he could work for it. You know, some man don't want to. No, you give it to him. And he cried because you see what's going to happen? He's going to cry to Yahweh. He's going to cry to his majesty against the eye and it be sin. It be hot yat. Right? It be a missing of the mark of falling from grace to thee. Thou shall surely give him and thine heart shall not be grieved. You see, some of y'all, you're giving, you're grieved. You know, I don't know if I want to give to the ministry, and you're grieved about it. Something's wrong with you, not with what I and I is doing, but your wicked thought, right? And you be grieved when thou givest to him, because that for this thing, Yahweh Eloheka shall bless thee. Right? He shall bless us if we give in all thy works. You know, we, we want to go a little deep in this, because we used to say, wait, Ones want to know, well, how come some of their works don't work out? Because you're wicked heart. Because you're not giving to your poor brother. Because your eye be evil against your brother. Right? Your eye be evil against your sister. Right? Bless thee in thy works. When we give, he blesses us. You might have talent and skill and wit and wisdom. But still, the race is not, okay, okay. Oh, Yeshua, I hear you. Right? There's a verse, there's a verse for that, right? There's a, you know, there's a verse for that. It's so very, it's so very, very interesting. There's a verse for that, right? And, and we need to be adverse to that, right? You know, to that way of thinking. Here it goes right here, Ecclesiastes, which is one of the readings during this time. Ecclesiastes 9.11, 9.11, Alright, what does Ecclesiastes 9.11 say? Alright, well Ecclesiastes 9.11, here's what Ecclesiastes 9.11 say. Alright, Ecclesiastes 9.11 says this, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle, the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding or overstanding, if you please, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. How many is all? All is all, right? Time and chance happens to everyone. So just because your brother or your sister is going through a season, you know, there's no need for you to have in your wicked heart no need for I and I to have in our wicked heart, right, against our brother and our I being evil to our brother and our I being evil to our sister. Because when you flip the script and study it, right, that evil eye is no longer seen, right, that, that evil eye is no longer there, right, because you freed your mind, not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Ecclesiastes 9, 11, one more time. He says, I returned, right? The return, the return of the Moshiach, the return of Christ. I returned and saw under the sun his face, right? His face was shining as the sun, right? And his garment white as the light and the rays that the race is not to the swift. Just because you run fast doesn't mean you're going to win the race. It's a rat race. It's always a faster rat. Nor the battle to the strong. Don't trust in your strength, your physical strength, because you think you're strong, right? Neither yet bread to the wise. You think, oh, I'm slick. I can get bread, right? Bread, a euphemism also for money, right? Nor yet riches to men of understanding. There's many people who have who are very intelligent folks and they, and they don't got no money, right? And you say, oh, because it's stupid. No, you don't understand the time nor the chance. It says, nor yet favor to men of skill. Look, a lot of times they hire people that got no skill, 
right? So you don't get that job. Somebody else gets that job. You think, oh, it's because you don't have enough education. Don't have that in your mind. Don't have that thought. Those type of thoughts is what make the wicked, the wicked heart, the wicked feelings and emotion, and then make your eye evil when your brother or your sister need of something and you don't want to give to give to them. Because it says, but time and chance happen to them all. And this is the ninth chapter of Ecclesiastes, the 11th verse. This is the real 9-11. We're in the Shabbatical, the Sabbatical year, the Shemitah year, the year of release. It's time to release all those debts, all those worries and debts and worries and frets. Release them in the name of Yeshua, Beshem Yeshua, right? Beshem Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, and glory be to the Father, release those debts, right, those debts, those thoughts, right, the thoughts, you're heavily burdened, many of y'all are heavily burdened because of those, many of I and I, but, I, but I'm, I'm releasing them to Yeshua, I'm taking him at his word, amen, so it says, for the poor shall never cease out of the land, therefore, I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide to thy brother. Verse 11, chapter 15. We're in Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy 15, 11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Remember Judas? Judas was talking about, Oh, why you spend so much money on the ointment? That could have been used, you know, that could have been used for the poor. You understand? And what the Yeshua said? He said, the poor you have with you always. Right? He said, me, you don't have with you always. So let's, you know, let's take a, you know, let's take a good stock of this. Right? The value of it. Let's get the true value out of this word right here. And pray for wisdom. Right? Because it says this right here. It says this right here. Let's, let's get this clear. Let's get this clear. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. His majesty says, rich and poor, you've always have and you always will. That's what the scripture says. Therefore, I command thee. We're given a command, right? Saying, thou shalt open thine hand wide to thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. So three classes. To thy brother, open our hand in our land. To the poor and to the needy. Verse 12. And if thy brother... And Hebrew man doesn't say thy brother a Jewish man. No, don't say a Jewish man. It says thy brother a Hebrew man. Doesn't say thy brother a, 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 a black man. It don't say thy brother a black man. It says thy brother a Hebrew man, right? A Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman. Deuteronomy fifteen and twelve, or a Hebrew woman be sold to thee. Now I gotta put this in context for some of y'all on that Alex Haley shit. You know, that Alex Haley, that roots, right? And you're not in your true roots, right? The root and the offspring of great King David. You're not in your true roots. When it's about sold, don't think of this like Willie Lynch, how to make a slave, so forth and so on. That's already been proven that the worst slavery in the existence is what our people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, have gone through over the past 400 plus years. And now we're in a spiritual Right? A kind of a spiritual, psychological slavery. Right? Spiritual slavery. And if thy brother, an Hebrew man, or a Hebrew woman. It don't say Jewish man. It don't say Jewish woman. It don't say black man. It don't say black woman. It says a Hebrew. We are the redeemed, beta, Ethiopian, Hebrew, Israelite tribe nation. The elect Rastafari. Right? Be sold to you. That means, for example, I'm in... Shashimani, I'm in Ethiopia. I'm in. A, 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 I have a piece of land. We have works going on. Brother or sister come from abroad. They might work for I for six years, right? For six years. And and let me let me go on so you can understand. That's what it means that they are sold to you. They become your employee, right? It says right here, not your slave, and serve these six years, six years. So that means when we have someone working for us in such a state within our land, it's not like, oh, they can keep their children's children, 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 and breed and breed 
how to make a slave. No, 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 no. You see, and this is what shows the judgment that's coming on America. Because they claim to be in the Bible. They claim to live by the Bible, right? But they lied against, right, the race and the grace of God, right? The race of I and I, saying we were three-fifths, right, of what they think they are, right? But here's the word says, that if thy brother and a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman be sold to thee and serve thee six years, and it was sold into service to you, right? Don't get this twisted with woolly lynchism and what our people went through, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 68, all right? Then in the seventh year, which is like now the Shemitah year, in the seventh year, thou shalt let him go free from thee. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt let him go free, right? Thou shalt let him go free from you. Verse 13, and when thou sendest him out, you know, so a brother in comes to work for I, if I'm already established in the land, right? And he's come over to work for I, you understand? Or, or, or to make his way in the land. This is, this is our economy. This has not been done in Shashimani. This has not been done, right, in the promised land. And we wonder why we're in the situation we're in. That's why I say that our problem is not a white man or other man or Gentile problem. It's a, it's, it's a Yahweh problem. It's a God problem, an Elohim problem, right? We're going to other resources and neglecting our true source, our wisdom, Torah, right? Yeshua's Torah, right? And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. I ain't just because he worked for me and now, okay, the Shema tell you, get out of here, man. Get out of here and send him away poor. Send him away with nothing. You don't send him away empty. So that means that ones who have, right, give and help. And there's an economical system for those who have not among our people. This is our economy. This is the foundation and foundation of I and I economy right here. This is what we call love. See, this is love. It's not just a a a a, 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 a funny feeling, you know, a feeling that may come or go. Right? His word is for Iva. Verse 14. Thou shalt furnish him liberally. That means liberally, generously, out of thy flock, and out of thy floor, and out of thy wine press. So when you send him forward, you're not gonna send him forth empty as our ancestors were by these counterfeit, these counterfeit Christians. Right, these so-called Christians over here, right? Uh, Gentiles did to our people, right? They sent them forward, and then they had to come back and do sharecropping and got in a deeper debt than the first debt that they were in. This is why it says the iniquity of that. What? The Amorites is not yet full because they're Amorites, right? The the, the Anglo uh, Amorite is the Anglo. Amorite establishment. What can't you get about that? You don't get it yet? Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock. So give him some of the some sheep to go with, right? Out of thy floor, right? The barn, right? Out of thy wine press. Give him wine, right? Or Aishan. Of that wherewith Yahweh Eloheka have blessed thee. So what we get from our land is a barakat, is a blessing that we receive from Yahweh, from Jah, Rastafari, and we are to give it to our brother because here it is in Torah, here it is in the law, right? So you're going off when you don't know this, and, and this is why we see what's going on. You, many ones have been complaining about Shashimani and Ethiopia, and how come this and how come that, and I say, to the law, right, and to the testimony. If they don't speak like this, there's no light in them. This is the glory. His majesty said to me, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Abba, Father, knows best, and he knows whom to bless. So when he blesses I and I, we also bless, right? Bless thee, thou shalt give to him. We shall give to our poor brother or the Hebrew man or the Hebrew woman that worketh for us right for those six years in the seventh year is the year of release let it go right let go those debts right verse 15 says and thou shall remember that thou wast 
a bondman, that we also were bondmen, right? And bondwoman, bondmen and bondwoman in the land of Gibbets, in the land of Kemet, in the land of Egypt, in the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahweh Eloheka, he did what? He redeemed thee. He redeemed I and I, right? Therefore, I command thee this thing today. Today, if you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts. As they did in the provocation, right? And fell in the wilderness. As many are fallen, uh, are fallen for the lies and deception of the enemy, right? So the sabbatical year, the Shemitah year, very important. Wanted to say just a couple of brief words on it. Hallelujah. You know, um, because the evil doers, they plan, they imagine a mischievous device, right? Against I and I, Abba Father, right? They imagine a mischievous device, and that's their so called New World Order, which they are not able, as the scripture says, they are not able, as Psalm 21 11. So whenever you hear about the Illuminati and this and that, they're trying to do this, just read this. Read this, commit this, memorize this, Psalm 21, 11. What's Psalm 21, 11? Let's touch on Psalm 21, 11 and wrap up right here on the sabbatical year. Stay tuned. What a feat, y'all willing. We'll touch on what his spirit inspires us to touch on, hopefully on, um, on the Mount of Transfiguration and the reading from Matthew or Mark's gospel, Matthew and Mark. It's enough the gospel. But here's what they here's what they have attempted, right, against his imperial majesty. This is why his majesty right here flips the script on them. Right? Let's put this over here. Right? And we see that flip of the script. Right? There's that flip of the script. Where's that evil eye now? Right? That evil eye is a blind eye. It's the god of the world, Sakla. Right? But here's what the scripture says. So all that New World Order, you know, you hear about, yeah, they're going to do some things. And they're doing some things. But here is the overcoming. Every time I hear Bush talk about, yeah, and when we succeed and we will succeed, you know, like we, they, they will. But here's what we chant. We chant Psalm 21. What? Agenda 21? Psalm 21. Agenda who? 21, 21st century? 21, 11. Uh-oh. That 11 again. Uh-oh. Somebody say, uh-oh. Here it says, for they intended evil, right? They intended evil against thee. They've intended evil against his majesty and against his children in Yeshua HaMoshiach. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device. A nilvad ada. They imagined a nilvad ada, right? They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to to perform right they are not able to perform oh, Amen. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do this the holy spirit want me to since we talk about agenda 21 this is for agenda 21 maybe we'll crop this one out if we can go through this whole thing right here on the shimmer to year more to come on that brothers and sisters let's just wrap up right here with this psalm 21 psalm 21 for agenda 21 all right, Amen. Psalm 21 for Agenda 21. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, of Dawit, right? The king, Nagus, shall joy in thy strength, Abba, to thy father, his father, O Abba, of the house of the Beta Rastafari. In thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Right? When he say all manners of evil against you, he said. He said, rejoice and be what? Exceedingly glad. Because we know our names are written there. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. Selah. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness, thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asks life of thee 
and thou gavest it him even length of days forever and ever. <laughs> Which king is this? The king of kings. His glory is great in thy salvation, in thy Madan. His glory is great. Let's set this up so you can see a, a, a good visual on it. Right? His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty thou hast laid upon him. And thou hast made him most blessed. Yahun. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance, with thy face. For the king, Negus, even Negus and Neges, trusted in Egeziabihir, the sustainer. And through the mercy of the Most High, El Elyon, he shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I and I shall not be moved, not be moved. Right? Thine hand, thy yard, shall find out thine enemies. Where them at? Where them at? Thy right hand, the Yemen, Ben Yamin, Ben Jaman, right? Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. We're going to find out you Selassie haters, right? Whether you be foreign or domestic, we're going to find you out, right? Thou shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath. Right? His wrath will swallow up the wrathful child. Raw child. And the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou down destroy from the earth. And their seed, that reptilian serpent seed, from among the children of men. I'm hearing the lion of Judah because, uh, you know, the lion is a natural enemy for the reptiles, right? For they intended evil, right, against thee. They intended so much evil against his divine madness, against Adamawi, Hala Selassie, and I and I. They intended evil against thee. They made war against the king of kings, and the war has come to their door. They intended evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device, a nuvad ada, right? Which they are not able to perform. Therefore, thou shalt make them turn their back. When thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Now, there's something very interesting about this. Do I have time to just touch on this before the last verse? Let me just go over the last verse and I'll return to this if we have time. Be thou exalted, Abba, to I father, his father, O father, the house, Abba, caduce, caduce, caduce. In thine own strength, so will we sing and praise and Isis, and Isis in Yeshua's name, thy power, thy hail. Amen and amen. Kubur like alu, kubur dimsu, kubur. Le hai lu kubur le kerma we hala salasi be Jesus Christos getachina met hana tachin sim amen. Verse twelve again. Verse twelve. This is for agenda twenty one. Psalm twenty one is for agenda twenty one. Right. It says in verse twelve. Therefore, thou shalt make them turn their back. <laughs> what was that? They're gonna turn their backs, right? When thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. You understand? It's, it's like a circular judgment. They, they think they're going to get away. They're going to turn their backs. And he's going to make the arrows ready against their face. I, you you got to imagine this right here. This is so beautiful. But the key verse is 2111. 2111. 2111. For they intended evil against thee. They intended evil against against his Ivine majesty. They intend, intended evil against the king of kings, right? They intended evil against him. They imagine a mischievous device. Right? All the, you know what's interesting? The Shimata, let's just go over a couple of the Shimatas, right? The, there's a, there was a Shimata in 1973. 
You know what happened in 1974? There was a Shemitah in 1980, right? So Shemitah 1973, right? Ethiopia and the creeping coup, right? The rebellion against His Majesty in 1974. There was a Shemitah in 1980, and what happened in 1981? They killed Burhana Selassie, Bob Marley. There was a Shemitah in 1987, 88. I know something happened in 88, but let's keep it moving. There was a Shemitah in 2000. And in 2001, what they did, the two towers, right? <laughs> there was a Shemitah in 2007, and then in 2008, <laughs> y'all started bye buying for Obama, and now the great abomination, right? Not Obama, but you know, we know what we're saying. If you know, if you don't, then you're ignorant. Then ask for wisdom. So we're at a time when the world is progressing towards the judgment. When the Shemitah and the blood moon convergence, a great shaking is coming to America, to Babylon. The Jubilee, the EOBLU, which is seven times seven is 49. And then in the 50th year, that's what a Jubilee is. The 50th year is about restoration, the restoring of I and I land, the restoration of I and I land. And the seventh Shemitah, which this is, the seventh Shemitah can well be a wrap, right? This, this could be the wrap, right? This could be the wrap, you know what I mean? This is why when it says that Satan knows that he has a short time, he knows, he sees the signs in the heavens, right? You know, he hears the trumpet as I and I lift up I and I voices. You understand? He knows he has a short time, and that's why he goes out, and he's going out in great wrath, right, against the remnants. So stand strong, be strong, my brothers and sisters, and as a as a as a missa, or a, a dis, before the dismissal, right here, right. We wanted to touch on um, Ephesians, because Ephesians is all about that spiritual war. And we're in a time of spiritual war. This is a spiritual warfare. It's a psychological warfare. We hope and pray it doesn't become a physical warfare. But if it's a physical warfare, stay in his spirit and in his truth. And you will prevail. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Adonai and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, all the schemes, all the technology of Diablos, the liars, the slanderers, the haters of the King of Kings and his Christ, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach. For I and I wrestle not against flesh and blood, we don't wrestle against the Eucharist, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places and stop saying high and low. You're looking up and down against SmackDown. It's in high places. That which is in low places, we trample underfoot. He placed under his foot. He's our head with his body. So all things are under the church. Wherefore, take to you the whole arm of Elohim, that ye, I and I, and we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand, get up, stand up, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Right, the righteous man, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and your feet, right, your feet, here's, here, here's the key thing, having our feet, right, shod, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel of shalom. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye, I and I and we, shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the weak-hearted. And take the helmet of salvation, of Hoshua, of Yeshua's, the, the helmet of Christ is on thy head. And the sword of the Spirit, the Ruach, 
which is the word of Elohim. Praying always with all prayer, all salot, all tepella, and supplication in the ruach, in the irid, and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for the Kedusan, for I and I brothers, I and I brothers and sisters. And for me, that utterance may be given to I, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the Wengel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You got to read this, brothers and sisters. This gives you strength. But that ye may know my affairs and how I do, and this is his closing part, um, Tikio, uh, uh, Tikikus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in Adoni, in Adoni I shall make known to you all things. Right? So that delegation, we can see the order of the ministry. And we're, we're going to study this so we can apply this coming forward and establish the church of the firstborn. Whom I have sent to you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace, shalom, be to the wendemo, to the brethren, and love, fikr, with faith, with imnet. Exiavir from the father, from, from, from the sustainer, exiavir ab, from God, Elohim, the father, and from Ha Adon, Gita, Jesus Christos, Yeshua Ha Moshia. Grace, Sega, Hana, Chesed, be with all them that love Adonenu, Yeshua Ha Moshia, Gita, Jesus Christos, I and I, Master, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshia, in sincerity. Amen.